In the words of Captain Kirk, space is the final frontier. Now, unlike the Enterprise, we as yet can't go very far into it, but we can observe the phenomenal changes that take place up to 10 billion light years away from our planet. At the forefront of astronomical observation is the University of Warwick's Department of Physics, where, two years ago, they announced an astonishing discovery. It's called HS 2331, and it's one of the fastest spinning white dwarf stars ever found. We started to follow it up with various telescopes in different places, and then realized that we had found a real gem, because this star is a very small, very short period system. The two stars go around each other every 80 minutes, and the white dwarf is pulsating, so it gets brighter and dimmer every five minutes. And in addition, we found that it's rotating very rapidly, it's rotating once every minute. And so this makes it one of the most complex of these systems that we know of. Now in addition, what we found about this system makes us expect that it will brighten at some point by a factor of several thousands. And then it will be bright enough that people with binoculars can see it. Professor Gensiker wants no chance of missing the star's explosion. So he's recruited a team of top amateur astronomers from across the world. Between them, they're monitoring HS 2331, watching for those vital early warning signs. I have engaged in collaboration with amateur astronomers who, I mean, they should be really called semi-professional astronomers because they have got the similar equipment as we have just downscale. They've got electronic cameras and good telescopes and so on. And they've got all the time they need. So they can, every time it's clear, they can go out and they can look at our stars and tell us whether they're still faint or whether they're on the rise to the outburst that we predict. And if that happens, then we can swing some of the big telescopes where we have time allocated for that special event to this star and study it in all the details. You obviously know what, what phase the star is in from the observations that you've made the night before. So if you go to a particular field uh, and, and you look and you can see the star very faintly where you couldn't see it the night before, then the chances are that that star is then becoming active and then it's time to alert other astronomers to that. Is your heart in your mouth? Sometimes it can be, yeah, especially if you've been looking at a star for many, many years or where a star should be for many, many years and you haven't seen it. Uh, and then all of a sudden you go out one night and you point the telescope to the star and there it is. It takes you a couple of seconds to recover. The thing to do is to, is to move the telescope and then move it back to the field just to make sure that you've got the, ident the identification right. Um, and then, of course, you realise that something's happened and uh, you just alert the rest of the astronomical community. There's time set aside for special events like that. And if we are alerted, then we would call the people at the, at the observatory and tell them, please stop whatever you are doing and swing the telescope to that star and start to record its outburst and get us all the data you can get. HS 2331 is 260 light years away, so Gary's looking at the star as it was in the 1740s, when George II was king and Beethoven was a toddler. The actual rise from its really faint state at the moment to the brightest it will get is only a few days. So if somebody, some amateur, gets it on the rise, it will take only two days, maybe three days, until it reaches the maximum brightness. And then it will stay bright for a couple of weeks, maybe a few months, and then it will start slowly to fade away again. So if we want to understand the system, an important thing is to catch it as early on the rise to this outburst as possible. It will be terribly exciting, and it will just override whatever else I'm doing at that moment. So if that moment comes, it will be a couple of very busy days at the beginning for me, and then we will have to sort out the follow-up observations throughout the whole outburst and the return to, into the quiescent level afterwards. It'll feel fantastic. Um, I just hope it's me. Um, uh, if I go out one night and I see the star a magnitude or maybe two magnitudes brighter than what it normally is, uh, the first thing I will do will, will call Boris um, or send him an email and then I will send out a message to astronomers around the world saying that this star is active uh, and from that point onwards um, there'll be sort of large telescopes on Earth pointing at it, maybe one or two satellites, to try and get as much data as we can about this pretty unique star.